There once was a young flower salesman from Ireland named Marcus McCree. When Marcus was just 19 years old, he found himself on an exciting journey through Eastern Europe. He was journeying to Bucharest, Romania. When Marcus was younger, a Romanian stranger came through Dublin and told Marcus he knew how to cultivate the majestic blue rose. The stranger told Marcus that if he traveled to Bucharest and worked the Romanian lands for one year, he would teach him how to cultivate the blue rose. If Marcus came home with the knowledge of how to do this, he would be the richest man in all of Ireland. And so off he went. Marcus was about 50 miles outside Bucharest when he came upon a lovely young girl. She looked about a year or two younger than he was and was leaning up against a greenwood tree and crying. His feet were tired and he needed a rest. So he stopped and asked her what was wrong. Oh no, lass. Why is such a beautiful girl like you crying on such a fine day? Unburden yourself and I, Marcus McCree, will help you get the better of it. The girl lifted her tear-streaked face and tried to tell him. Her name was Zedkia, and she explained the reason for her tears. My father has returned home today from a very long journey, but it is not a happy reunion. He warned my brothers and I that if he came home late, disastrous things would happen. Zedkia's father was Gorcha. He was a warm and hospitable man that had left the year prior. He said he was away to track down a Serbian outlaw that was rumored to be a monstrous and blood-sucking Vordelak. Gorcha told his three children that he would be home within 12 months and that if he was gone even one hour past the year mark, they were to kill him by driving a stake into his heart. He told them if they did not do this, they would become hideous monsters. He has come home after 12 months and one day, but he seems his old self with no change to his demeanor. But now my two brothers are at home fighting over whether or not to kill him. Marcus comforted Zedkia. There now, ass. I shall remedy the situation. I shall travel back to your home with you and sort it out if anyone needs killing. Have no fear. I'll get to the end of it. And so Marcus and Zedkia walked deeper into the green wood to find her home at the end of the trail. The house was small and neglected in parts, but it seemed warm and filled with love. The sun went down just as they entered the threshold. And indeed, once inside, Marcus saw Zedkia's brothers, Dorte and Philip, fighting over a miserable Gorcha who sat distraught in the corner. Philip argued to kill his father, while Dorte argued that all seemed well and they would be killing an innocent man. At the sight of a new visitor, everyone calmed down and turned their attention on Marcus. Let us eat, said Zedkia, and see what the evening brings. So for three whole days, it was the same. Marcus worked their land and shared food and drink with the family and indeed saw nothing was amiss. It was so uneventful and quiet that Marcus and Zedkia had time to get to know one another and fall deeply in love. But at last, Marcus needed to travel on and learn how to cultivate the blue rose. So he kissed Zedkia goodbye and left the little house. The two promised they would write to one another for the next year. Zedkia did write to Marcus. At first, her letters were common, but sweet. But then they came with disturbing news. One letter said the sheep in the fields had been slaughtered in the night by what they thought was a dire wolf. Another letter 
said that a neighbor's toddler had been stolen away with blood trails leading through the forest. And the last and final letter came months later with the sad news that Zedkia's dear brother, Philip, had been killed. Each letter ended the same way with the words, please come back. Marcus was distraught to think about Zedkia so unhappy. He imagined the warm little home, so cold now with loss, and Zedkia wandering through it with sadness in her heart and tears in her eyes. After 12 months and one day, Marcus had fulfilled his promise and he left Bucharest with the knowledge of how to grow the blue rose. He packed his belongings and eagerly walked all day and into the evening. He would go back to Gorcha's house and ask for Zedkia's hand in marriage. And together they would go back to Dublin and become the richest couple in all of Ireland. The moon rose on the path as Marcus approached the green wood. And there, standing in the moonlight, almost exactly where he had met her before, was Zedkia, her skin glittering in the pale light. She had grown much in the past year. She was not an innocent girl that he remembered. This was a blossomed young woman, her body ready for the pleasures of marriage. She threw her arms around Marcus and he blushed. He could not hide his excitement when she said her father and brother had been deep in their cups and were passed out in their beds. Which means you can join me in mine. Zedkia giggled with girlish delight as she pulled Marcus down the path to the darkened house. He kissed her and laughed as they came across the doorway. But once inside, Marcus caught a chill and sensed something was wrong. It was too dark and the smell of death sent an alarm to his brain like a flash. Beyond the threshold, he heard a snarl and three pairs of impossibly strong hands grabbed Marcus and pinned him down on the wooden dining table. He looked into the snarling faces of his captors. They were ghastly with huge teeth, but in horror, he recognized them. This was Gorcha and Dorte and Philip. Marcus was so frightened that he shut his eyes tight and prayed to wake from this nightmare. But then he heard the voice of Zedkia, his love. He opened his eyes once more to see his sweetheart, much changed by the darkness. She too had become a blood-sucking Vordelac. Marcus kicked and screamed, and Zedkia laughed. <laughs> she unhinged her massive jaws slashed into his chest and devoured Marcus's heart as he looked on. And that was the end of poor Marcus McCree. <laughs>